First off, what is a musical motif? A motif is a short, repeatable line of music that is used throughout a piece. Motifs can be used to express themes in a tune or just to provide structure and familiarity to what would otherwise be a chaotic piece of music. You see motifs all the time. Some famous examples include the synth in Billie Jean, Britney Spears' Toxic, and of course the famous motif used in Beethoven 5. What we'll explore today is how musical motifs can be altered in a number of ways while still maintaining the same form, and how the way that they change is nearly identical to how geometric shapes can change and still be considered similar. Our jazz tune uses two central motifs. The first is a melodic motif that serves as the backbone of our piece, keeping tempo and giving the tune structure. Our second motif is a rhythmic harmony that serves as the focal point of our composition that the rest of the piece of rhythm is built around. In both motifs, the original line serves as a starting point for any changes, much like a pre-image in geometry. Now that we've established our motifs, let's take a look at how we use them. On pages 1 and 2, the bass and piano introduce both motifs that will be played throughout the whole piece. The bass rhythm is playing a variation of the melodic motif that will be played mainly in the saxes. The bass's version of the sax motif sounds so similar because it's on the same chords. This would be equivalent to having proportional sides in a geometrical shape, as the value of both the chords and sides dictates the relationship between the top and bottom of the motif or shape. The piano is playing the harmonic motif that will be repeated in the trombones and trumpets on the same rhythm. This is the musical equivalent of having similar angles, because in music, a measure represents a defined unit of time within a place, and it needs to be filled with notes that collectively occupy the entire duration of that measure. Similarly, in geometry, any four-sided shape is defined by four angles, and the sum of those angles must always add up to 360 degrees. However, in both cases, the places the degrees or notes are placed varies, creating different rhythms or shapes. Varying the placement of the degrees or angles in this case would result in a different motif or a non-similar shape. The rhythm section plays these motifs throughout the piece. As a result, you get this. During the next section, each set of instruments are playing parts that are similar to each other. For example, take the saxes. The original melody is playing on the top line. As you get on the score, the other saxes play the same rhythm, but different notes forming a chord. Think of it like this. If you want to assemble a large rectangle out of a bunch of smaller ones, the relationships between each of the corresponding sides must be the same, or there's going to be problems. Music is the same way. The key to forming a tonal chord is proper spacing between the notes, and without it the chord can become muddled or discordant. The shout chorus is our most complete example of our use of the two motifs. Every instrument in the band is playing some variation of either one. The saxes play the same rhythm they were playing in the last section, and the trumpets and trombone play the rhythmic harmony that the piano played into the intro. Our orchestration takes the piano shape, or our pre-image, and uses the same ratio to put it into the trumpet and trombone sections. The geometrical equivalent would be upscaling a shape, as both actions keep the fundamental ideas, but make them bigger or louder for a greater effect. Towards the end of the piece, the trombones and saxes trade off the melodic motif the saxes have been playing. This exchange of the motif is very similar to the idea of slightly scaling up or down our original shape. This is because the sax part functions as a preimage, and the line played in the trombones is nearly identical, just a slightly different dynamic to give the line dialogue between the two. Here's the whole tune. So, motifs very much reflect similarity in geometry. They are built off of an original idea and break off 